I'm Mark and this is my friend Harry and we like carp fishing and are both very lucky to be able to do it as part of our work. Despite being in the fortunate position we are, it is impossible not to notice how expensive much of this wonderful pastime has become. Day tickets, syndicates, the cost of tackle and bait, it all adds up and with the current economic climate everyone is feeling the squeeze. With the cost of living at an all-time high, we wanted to visit venues that are accessible to almost any budget and see exactly what they have to offer. Now, often in the UK, the best value fishing can be found through clubs. Clubs play a key role in angling for local communities and none more so than this one, the Earl of Harrington Angling Club in Derby. So this is the first lake that we've come to, Alstree, I think that's how you say it, I'm not quite sure, Park Lake. And um, yeah, beautiful, beautiful venue. We've already found a few carp sort of milling about on the top in this corner. So yeah, surface fishing is first port call. Mark's just put on a uh, small bubble float to take his piece of crust out there. We're gonna start just trying to use single bits of crust as to not attract too many attentions from the bird life. And then if that doesn't work, probably move on to putting some floating pellets out. Mark's got all of his basic covered uh, for today. And I've just got my floater kit at the moment, although I can nip back and get a little bit extra. But yeah, first off, let's try and get one on the bank. in between the two. Oh, they didn't like that. Didn't, did they? Didn't like that. No. Get off it. I think we need to get some floaters in, H. What? I think we need to get floaters in. So, as I said, we started off with trying to catch them just on singles, tried to not attract the uh, bird life. That didn't work. They just weren't interested in the single piece of bread. So I thought I'd put some floaters out and the instant I put floaters out, everything all the bird life has arrived so i've i've put some floaters and some bread just down to the right to try and keep this area free but the other thing that happened is i put the floaters out and the carp just seemed to vanish so they didn't like that I and mean, one thing that is definitely true with you know these park lakes and club lakes is lots of people fish them and the fish are heavily pressured so maybe it's going to take a little bit of time to get their confidence up um or a little bit of time just to work out exactly how it's going to be the best best route of uh, of catching these fish. There's quite a few there. This is looking good. Yeah, this is this is looking good. Come on, come on. This is the one. Go on. Now they've all just swam past it. There you go. That didn't take long, did it? Oh, I didn't change anything. Oh, you didn't? No. Hey! Yeah. Go on, see you later. Oh. <laughs> the only difference was the um, hook bait was like just floating. Right, yeah, yeah. Right, and you just said to me that you've had a little special hook bait on that was a little bit sneaky. Yeah, you didn't so tell got... me about, thanks. Really? Yeah. So yeah, I've got a pot of um, them Sonu baits, oily floaters, and some of them are quite small. They're only kind of like eight mil in size, which is which is what 
the carp have been feeding on a lot more confidently, haven't they? We've been putting yeah, in. Yeah, we've been putting in six millers, and then well, when they swell up, they'll be around about eight mil. Don't go around there. Yeah, that's what I'm trying Don't not to let him there. go around. So yeah, I just um, put on a smaller, a smaller size one. And also, I say just put on. I think I've had three or four casts for that. So it had swelled up, um, but I checked it in the edge. And where I've had a few casts with it, it's um, a critically floating. Critically <laughs> floating, yeah. yeah. So the yeah. opposite of how you'd want a pop-up to sink, that's how yes. it floats. It was just sort of sat on the surface film. So anything that caught sort of, I mean, these have been feeding pretty cautiously. Re really cautiously. Just now when you've had that bite, they've got a little bit more confident, but. But when, when you're fishing with these like critically floating, hook baits, I think sometimes fish can come underneath it and almost like drink it in. They don't have to come up and, and, and like, where you yeah, see the yeah. mouths come out when of the they water. they come and like nail it, it's more yeah. like sipping it, isn't exactly. it? Exactly, and I think that's made the difference. This one proper nailed you on the first run there, didn't it? Yeah, it took about 30 yard of line. Proper nailed you. Get in that net. Yes, oh, nicely mate. done, well done. Well done you. Yeah. Good skills. Happy awesome. with that. I wasn't expecting, that's, I think that's the biggest one we've seen today, isn't it? I haven't seen many bigger oh, than that. Seen, nah. Look at that. All day. I was not expecting to catch something like this. This is um, by far the biggest fish I think we've seen swimming around today. And yeah, he's probably around, I reckon that's about, I reckon that's about 22, maybe 23 pound. Maybe it's even a bit bigger. But uh, yeah, I'm made up. That's proper dark old warrior. Really chuffed. Yeah, it's that, that's it's yeah, hundred percent. Look at the wrist on its tail. So it's got it's got like two scales there but on its on its shoulder. It's got that little cluster just above its peck. Single scale there on that patch of light. And it's got like the and there's a line there as well. Isn't there? Just below there's the brown that, that black brown that line. You can see it there. Look. Oh yeah, that one. It's just there. Look. That yeah. line there. Yeah. So fish water. Yeah. I'll do. <laughs> That'll do. Yeah. <laughs> So have you just been told? So I've just been told I've actually just caught the biggest fish in the lake. <laughs> <laughs> That's good angling. <laughs> well done. Yeah, it was a good estimate. Yeah, we said about 22, 23. You said it's 25, like, before spawning, so... Well so that went in, that went, that was stopped for winter of 2019, I think. And the chat Happy days. In. Can't get much better than that. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a setup I use to catch the biggest fish in the lake. Here I've got one of the large bolt bubbles and this is my go-to float, my go-to setup for all my, my surface fishing. As the name suggests, because of the shape of the float, it really does emphasize the bolt effect. It kind of does the same job as a, as a lead would if you're fishing on the bottom. Um, that means, of course, you don't need to pay as much attention to the hook bait you can instead focus on feeding the swim uh, because the float does the job. It does the job of, of setting the hook, which means you don't need to strike when the fish um, puts, it, puts its mouth over the hook bait. You don't need to strike. I see a lot of people not knowing exactly when to strike and then they strike too early. The fish spooks, it spooks the other fish that are feeding and before you know it, the job's knackered. Whereas with this, there's never any doubt whether the fish has taken the hook bait or not. So coming down from the float, I've got a fairly short hook link of around two and a half feet. That's of 10 pound zig and floater line. If you come down to the hook and the hook bait, 
hook is a size 10, so you can float a hook. I've got a small piece of silicon tubing over the eye there just to ensure the hook exits straight. It doesn't come in at an angle and, and narrow the gape too much. Um, and then I have a small Sonu bait, a floating pellet as a hook bait. Um, I've attached the hook bait just on a, on a standard hair rig, although this is done KD style. So I tie a normal knotless knot, whip down six, seven turns, kick the hair out, then whip below it, and then whip back up and pass the line through the hook. So with this hook bait, um, this is one that has actually been in the water for, for quite some time. I've had like five, six casts with this. The pellet has taken on quite a lot of water. So when I drop it in the edge, it's only just floating. It's, it's kind of it's very similar to how we would fish a, a wafter hook bait on the bottom. It requires very little effort for the carp to, to suck it up. You get the, the hook bait flies right back in the mouth. You get great hook holds. I'm kind of doing the same thing here, but on the surface, that hook bait is only just floating. And any fish coming underneath that hook bait, if they're feeding very, very cautiously and tentatively, you just need to open their mouths and that hook bait will drop in. And I think that's exactly what's happened here. Because I've been told, apparently that's the first time that fish has ever been caught off the surface. There you go, biggest fish in the lake, first time off the surface, happy with that. Yeah, this lake has kind of, I think, surprised me, really, in terms of just how, how nice it is. You know, we are, we are right in Derby here, and um, yeah, this is just a beautiful, mature, it's got kind of like an estate lake vibe. Well, there is actually a big estate up there, so I guess it is an estate lake, and um, like the effort that the club has obviously gone to to maintain it to keep all the swims i mean the swims are are, are immaculate the better than than like some day tickets and syndicates that i've uh, i've been to so yeah in terms of value for money for like a place to sit and well we've been actually stood up most of the time but for a place to come and fish it's uh yeah absolutely lovely really really nice place and kind of wish that we were going to do a night here but we're not going to do a night here we're going to uh, sample some of the other lakes in and around uh, in and around this city and hopefully there's going to be some more fish to come so we are at the second venue i believe they call it haslam's uh, i probably pronounced that wrong but that's what i'm going to go for and it's kind of like a a moat kind of thing isn't it yeah yeah it's, it's a moat with a central island and uh loads of lilies loads of pads all over proper carpy looking that isn't it really? yeah yeah it is and and we've sort of got to this corner and this is where we've seen by far the most the most fish yeah um so i think what we're going to do is we're going to fish either side of the corner we both agreed not to put too much disturbance in because yeah, it is a small lake. I think it's definitely going to have a bit of small water syndrome. So mm -hmm. um, we don't want to put too much pressure on the fish. But there is one swim that I think we'd both prefer to be in over the other one. Not that I think it'll massively matter, but we're going to do rock, paper, scissors for Yeah, it. of course. No best of three. No best of three. Straight into Straight it. In. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Ready? One, one two, two, three. three. Oh, you you don't do it on three. You go, what? Rock, paper, scissors, shoot, isn't it? It's just bum, bum, bum. No, rock, paper, scissors. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. I've never done it that way. You have, because you would have done it against me that way. Right, rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Well, okay. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Ah, oh, no. See? I think I won the first one as well. No, I was going paper on the first one. <laughs> Hacked your brain. <laughs> <laughs> so. So you're going in here? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I don't think it matters. I really don't think it matters that much at all. I would have, I'd be happy here, I'd be happy there. Yeah, I'll be happy when the barbecue's on. So we are getting towards the end of the first day and it's been really really 
nice to be fair just i've been really impressed with the these venues this this second one all lovely and otter fenced i think this is one of the ones that's on their premium ticket so it's a little bit more expensive but i, st I think it's 130 150 quid for the year something like that um anyway what i've done now is i've just put um one rod to one set of pads one rod to another set of pads i mean this lake is literally covered in pads and even though there's really not a lot of water in each swim it really does seem like oh where do i where do i put the rod i could put it down there i could see so loads of really nice looking spots and i didn't want to really interrogate the uh the the area or the swim just because it's shallow there are fish present and i just think that they go if if i'd spent too much time um leading about so i just sort of thought i'm going to try and fish there and i'm going to try and fish there a couple of casts with a lead confirm that they were clear and then i've just gone in uh, with one over a small amount of boilies that's just on a um on a small 10 mil wafter uh, it's only 10 mil boilies and a few pellets as well some 8 mil Bella Chan pellets and then the other rod I've just got over um, half a tin of sweet corn so really just fishing for a bite I think that's all we're gonna get from here it's very close it's very um, yeah very tight you're not it's not the sort of venue where you're gonna be putting a hit of fish together you're wanting to nick a bite so if that's what we're gonna try and do tonight put another fish on the scoreboard keep it ticking over and uh, and yeah tomorrow's a new day and I think we're probably going to go on to another venue in the morning. But right now we're going to put the barbecue on and enjoy the rest of this gorgeous day. How's about that to start the day? Got a really nice plump common of 22 and a half pound. And it fell to the left hand rod, fish close to these uh, this main set of, of pads on a yellow Northern Special wafter. The lake bed there was really clean. There was no sort of debris. So I went with a wafter presentation and just fished over a few handfuls of 10 mil live system boilies. Really simple tactics, but it's done the business. You got H? Well, I've just actually been round to Mark because he's just had one. Yeah, seems like the early morning is definitely the one on here. Yeah, he's had a lovely 22 pounder and my <coughs> left hand has just busted off. And now the main thing is, is just trying to play it through through the pads, which it was in and I've now got it out of one set of pads. I've just got another 350 sets of pads to go. But um, yeah, we did actually just see a fish show just behind this rod actually. So yeah, pleased to be bent in to a Haslam's calf. It's such a lovely little place this. Really like enchanting with all the pads. It was really quiet last night.
You going to net it for me? Hello, Mark. Fish, yeah, is he? Not bad at all. Oh no! Get him! Get him! Get him! Have you got him? I don't know. No, you missed him. Oh, sorry. Oh, oh no! Oh. Sorry, I couldn't get it. <laughs> That's annoying. <laughs> That's really annoying. Ah. Oh. I mean, that couldn't have been any more at the net. I don't think, I don't think the blame can lie on me. <laughs> <laughs> Never. Ah. Thoughts, feelings, etc. Emotions. What emotions are going through <laughs> right now? I'm just really annoyed at the fish. I just want to call the fish all sorts of names because it was obviously the fish's fault. I thought I had it. I thought I could, I thought I could have saved the day. And I mean, it is, it's one of them where, where there's that many pads and it's going in from one set into another into another, then that it is just going to weaken the hook hold. But, I mean, well, I'm sure you saw, like, it was that, that far away from the net. Well done on almost catching it. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Ah, oh, That's what we want to hear. You took it well, that actually. If I hadn't caught anything so far, I'd just lost it. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> So while Harry is still licking his wounds after losing that fish right at the net, I think this is the perfect time for me to show you a rig that actually puts fish on the bank. And I've been using uh, a Ronnie rig. It's kind of become my go-to rig these days. And I just have them all pre-tied in the hook packet. Here I'm using a size four curved shank hook we're all ready to go. All I need to do is add the boom section. I know a lot of people, because they have the, the, the quick change swivel there, um, a lot of people like the rig because it allows for an easy change of the hook. Uh, but for me, by the time you've put the, the ring on and the hook bead on, I think I can tie a boom just as quick. So I don't see it as any, uh, any slower than uh, changing the hook. So the boom section I'm using is the Camatex Soft in 20 pound. And yeah, it's just a case of tying that and then we are good to go. Now because I'm fishing close to them pads, I'm only fishing with a, a fairly short hook link. Uh, in total, the rig is about six inches long. As soon as that fish picks up the hook bait, I don't want it to be too much play, so it allows its chance to get into the pads. So I'm just fishing a six inch hook link. Literally takes a few seconds to tie. There you go. I always blob the little tag ends. It doesn't add any strength makes it look a little bit neater in my eyes. Now because where I'm fishing in and around those pads is pretty clean there's not really any debris or anything like that down there it's quite a firm quite a firm bottom. I'm fishing with a wafter hook bait. I know traditionally a lot of people fish with with pop-ups when they're using a, a Ronnie rig but I find it works just as well when fishing bottom baits and wafters. So yeah I'm just using yellow, Northern Specials. So to attach the hook bait, all I do is just thread bait floss through the micro hook ring swivel. Transfer the hook bait, pulling the barrel of the swivel into the wafter. Just trim, but leave a little tag and just burn that 
down and just dab the end of the floss to create a little a little plug and there you go that's all ready to go go on then go on then yeah fun on the right hand spot yeah i was actually thinking you know i'm surprised this hasn't gone because I've had more liners on the right hand rod than I have have the left. Just plodding about. That'll do. I'll do if it goes in the net. I don't want to do what you did. It's on your uh... cart freak. It's, it's on a pop up. I wasn't going to ask about the uh, pop up that you obviously then go to plug, but um, no, I was going to ask where. <laughs> Is this on the bunny? The same, same, same. Exactly the same rig with a different hook bait. Yeah, it was a lot more chuddy over on the right. There's lots what, of like. So what did you? Have you fished this as a pop up? Or? Yeah, this is on a pop up. Yeah, when I had a few casts there, it was quite a lot of black sort of stinky stuff there. So yeah, I put a, a pop up on this one. Nice. I don't like these. I love a Ronnie rig these days. I know. Literally, I think I changed your life on that challenge, didn't I? Yeah. <laughs> Literally did. I don't think you've used anything else since. One rig does all, isn't it? A clod up, isn't it? Oh, there we go. There's only a little one, but he doesn't like that. He doesn't like that at all. Ta. Right. Where are you? How deep's that? Hmm, deeper than I thought. You're gonna come off? Where are you? Oh, I see you. If I go that way. Can you just scoop him? Oh, he's free. These rods are lovely for playing fish on, although the a three and a half pound Tesco, they are so tippy. So when you do get a fish under the rod tip, they've got a nice cushion in action there. But down below, they've got a lot of power for being able to safely extract fish away from the pads like this. That fish I caught this morning, he made a beeline straight for that thick set of pads in front of me. And that's when that sort of lower section really came into play for getting him out safely into open water and in my net harry yeah well if you'd have been a bit better at netting I'd have, I'd have ah, okay <laughs> he's probably going for it isn't he this one well, that one you had this morning you just Rinsed it away from the snags and wound it in. Yeah. <laughs> Come on then. Yes, no hook pull at the net, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well done, mate. Thank you. Oh, this has been such a cool little venue, hasn't yeah. it? Proper old warrior, that one. Yeah, man. And there we go, we've got another plump common this one's probably about 15 pound and it does feel like something of a, a bonus fish because it's already really really warm and i was thinking that bite time was slipping away but i think this is a nice fish to finish on this venue because we are now going to get packed up and head off to another venue that's on this ticket so i'm going to slip him back straight away get the gear packed up then hit the road Okay, so that 
is Haslam's done and we are on to the next venue um, I really enjoyed my time there it's such a lovely lake and really appreciate the the work that the club have done to put into that because it's all non for profit and yeah really impressed with, with what they're doing very very gutted though to have lost that fish this morning um, yeah not what I expected a hook pull right at the net oh my god anyway onwards and upwards to the next venue and this is a park lake and one that I'm really excited about this is one that the people I've spoken to at the club here have said yeah you've got to go to Alveston Park Lake you've got to go there um, there's, uh, there's plenty of fish it's really good fishing and it's a very unique venue so yeah I'm going to enjoy my time there hopefully we're going to stop off at Lidl I think to get some supplies on the way but it's a short 15 16 minute drive gonna get there it's 25 degrees right now another gorgeous day and I'm gonna have to see what this next venue holds really really stoked let's go Well, here we are at the next venue on the Earl of Harrington club ticket and this is Alveson Park Lake or Alvo as I imagine it's probably known to the locals and this is about as park lakey as it could possibly get I mean it's a park lake for one first box ticked next up loads of ducks swans geese um, and lots of carp swimming around too cruising around on the surface. Um, I think floater fishing is pretty much a write-off with this amount of birds, but I have let Harry loose with a catapult under, I have to say, my strict guidance. He's been allowed to put some bait in the swim. Um, so yeah, we have actually seen quite a bit of coloured water in this area. Um, it looks fairly shallow. So I think, I think it's looking pretty good for a quick bite. Probably famous last words, but we'll give it a go. So just whilst we're getting a few bits and pieces sorted, I thought I'd go through kind of the base of what the kit that I've taken on this session, and it kind of replicates what Mark's taken as well. Um, the main thing is the Explorer uh, rucksack barrow bag. Now this is what I use for all of my fishing, but it really lends itself to either being used as a short day session type bag. You, you've got the straps and stuff on there, so you can use it as a rucksack. It's got a really good harness, but also, um, as a barrow bag and for fishing off the barrow where I can just open it up and where I've got it segmented out everything is to hand so I, I, I'm not having to dig right down into the into the bottom of my bag because it's quite a shallow bag um, but everything is is in dividers it makes it really really easy um, and the great thing with these bags as well is that the, the dividers are completely customizable, so you can do it however you want. Personally, I like everything to be sectioned off and divided. I know Mark, he's just got one divider in his. He's got a sort of big section and a slightly smaller section, and he has all of his stuff in there the way that he likes it. But I just love the fact that it's so customizable. So yeah, that's the bag. And then fishing off of an Explorer Barrow, bait and stuff in the in the main barrow bag compartment i've got the camo on hooking mat and then yeah my my explorer rods in the sleeves with the explorer net really really um small compact kit you know these club lakes that 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 we've decided to fish on this session none of them are very big there's no um real real big chucks and it's just a lot 
a lot easier, a lot nicer, a lot more convenient to fish with these short rods, especially somewhere like Haslam's that we've just come from. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna finish getting my kit sorted and hopefully catch some of these Alvo carp. Give me that goddamn corn and a catapult. Oh, well, this has been a proper struggle, to be fair. We've not worked out how to catch them at all. And a zig that I've had cast out since pretty much when we started, it was, it was the first rod I cast out, actually. And I've just left it and tried other things and, and whatever else. And yeah, finally, I've had a, had a bite. Go on, you're gonna get him. Go on the yellow zigger liner. <laughs> Jeez, that was hard work. There have literally, there have been fish cruising everywhere all afternoon. And it's just been one of them where it's been so hot that I think they've wanted to do absolutely nothing. And just in the last 15 minutes, it's sort of, I don't know, the fish seem to have changed their mood a little bit. Um, but I'd still say that that was completely out of the blue. Go on the yellow zigger liner. Well, he is certainly not breaking any records, but he's got me off the mark on this little trip around Derby. And yeah, I'm pleased that we finally managed to catch one on here because it's been a lot harder than the amount of fish cruising around on top might have you thinking. It's definitely, it's definitely the heat and the, and the middle of the day that's, that's causing it. I think it'd definitely be the sort of venue that if the conditions are, were right, you could, you could catch a lot of fish very quickly. But I'm gonna slip him back because he definitely wants to go. Far less gently than I'd have imagined, but there we go, one on the bank. Mad that, it didn't take long, did it? After my one, and that's on the bottom. On the bottom? Well, it's probably only been about 15 minutes since Harry slipped his fish back, and one of my rods is away. Although, totally different tactics to what did Harry's bite. This was on, on the bottom. On... This was over my expertly catapulted pellet. It was on. With, with lots of guidance from me. <laughs> this was on the base where I instructed you to put <laughs> and the quantity that I instructed you to put in. And it seems that we've had a little bit of cloud cover come in. The temperature's dropped quite a lot. I mean, it's, it's probably been around 30 degrees today and it's dropped. It feels nice and comfortable now. It just looks better. There's not as many fish cruising around. It's only a shallow lake anyway. It's probably only about two and a half foot where we're fishing. <sighs> yeah, something literally. Like that. So it didn't take much for that cloud cover, drop in temperature for them fish to drop down. Yeah, I'm playing my first fish from here. Cool. Is he ready? Oh. Oh, got double tank. Here, do you want to land that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's mine. No, it's not his own, yeah. <laughs> Hold on. Go on, go on, go over it, go over it. <laughs> what? Okay. What a mess. Oh no, now I'm... Here, here. This way. <laughs> oh, has it come off? Ah, oh, this oh. one's come off. Oh. Here we go. This time. This time. Here we go. There we go. There we go. Here he is. 
There he is. Go. Go on. Easy. Yeah. Easy. Nice well step. done. Thank you. Don't know quite. That's... Don't know quite what happened with my one. Long time. Oh, no. Well done. Yeah. I think this young lad wants to see the fish. Want to see the fish? <laughs> Come closer. Have a look. Don't be scared. Don't be scared. I said, Do you want to touch him? Touch him. Come on. Say hello. Go on. Touch him. No. Touch him. Not pretty. Well, he might not be massive, but at least it continues my 100% runner form on the venues we've fished so far. And it just goes to show that once that cloud cover came in, the temperature dropped, we've had three bites in no time at all. Fortunately, one of them came off because we had, a, we had two, two takes at once, pretty much. But I'm gonna slip him back. I do think there's a chance of another quick bite. There you go. Well, it's been really, really tough today. The heat hasn't helped at all, but we've had a fish each. So I think we're pretty happy with that. But for tonight, I think the best plan is that we head back to Haslam's to give Harry a chance of redeeming himself, not just because of that fish he lost at the net, but also because of that barbecue he did last night. Yesterday. They're done. They're done. Right. I think they're done. Right. I think they're done. Mm. I, I see what you've gone. I see what you've gone for. What I've gone for. Mm. You literally for the last like twenty minutes. Yeah. You were relentlessly going. Put the burgers on. Put the burgers on. Have yeah. you put the burgers on? Have you put the. Yeah. And I was saying no. It's too hot. And then you mm. were like, just put the burgers on. And yeah. like, and to be fair, I I caved when I knew that I shouldn't have done. But it was more to prove a point that it wasn't. I ready. No. No, if you that needed them on. that needed no. forty five minutes. If forty five minutes. Yeah, it had literally only. I don't need just lit the 40, bag. Forty five minutes before you can eat something. Yeah, that's the whole point of a barbecue, isn't it? You, it takes a it takes time, doesn't I, it? I think it got hotter with time. I think you missed your moments. Well, that is also the point. It does get hotter with time, exactly. and then it cools down. Or put it on before it gets hotter. No, because then it's then it starts on a cool heat and then it accelerates. That's yeah. like the opposite of what you want. I think there's other factors that you haven't even considered with this, to be honest with you. I think it's all well and good trying to blame me. <coughs> Wind speed. Wind speed. Didn't factor that into the equation, did you? I did when I told you that I wasn't going to put them on. Fat content for the burgers. They're fatty burgers. They're adding to the flames. Coal. What coal is it? Little. There you go. There you go. Good. Good call. Didn't think about that. But all of these things I know. You didn't. Obviously. No, you didn't think about it. Doesn't look you like didn't, it, you. Yeah, you didn't think about them. Right, anyway. If we put plenty of cheese on it, it'll like mask the burn. Okay. I it, might, it might cushion my teeth as well. <laughs> they look crispy i like my burgers crispy should we put we'll, we'll do double cheese because yeah. i mean that's your one okay not that bad yeah there you go having a go at me and my my cooking So after last night's, I'd say relatively good action, it would have been very easy to just head straight for the same swims, which are like over there in that corner with that big set of pads. But we thought the right thing to do was to have a bit of a mooch around first. And firstly, standing in that swim, which was where we went to first, just to see whether it was as packed full of fish as it was yesterday. Um, 
and it wasn't. There just wasn't the same number of fish. There was still a couple about, but nothing that really got me sort of excited. So I felt like I had to had to do a proper lap, and and that's what I did. And yeah, along this bank, there are definitely a lot more fish. They're hugging the far margin, like over over the other side of the lilies. But it's clear that there's there's a lot more fish here. So yeah, I'm just going to set about getting a couple of rods sorted. I have changed one thing for tonight, uh, for sure, which is I've actually nicked Mark's live system. Um, I had my bait, my bite over sweet corn and a little bit of Pacific tuna. I had another rod that was fishing on Pacific tuna and pellets. That was the only rod out of all four of our rods last night that didn't do a bite. And Mark was fishing his two rods over live system. So perhaps the fish in here have got a bit of a sweet tooth, something like that. So I'm gonna go in with um, corn where I can catapult it. And then I think my other rod is gonna be on live system. So that's my main change. And yeah, I'm just, praying that it works because I am smarting still from that loss even though I caught one today I feel like that hasn't made up for it I feel like I need to exercise my demons on this lake you know how it is if you if you fish a lake for the first ever time and you come off of it with a loss you just want to avenge that and that's exactly what I'm going to try and do tonight So this is the last night. It is. Of, oh, I've enjoyed it. Have you enjoyed it? I have enjoyed it. Yeah, we've fished some great venues. Yeah, did caught you? Caught some really nice fish. So, what we haven't mentioned before is last week you posted up on social media asking for um, cheap or or potentially free venues. Yeah. Like the response was ridiculous, yeah, wasn't it? I, I do have to say a massive, massive thank you to everyone who replied to that. I think it was, was it over 1,200 it, comments and it suggestions? Was, it was, yes. It was it crazy. Was unbelievable. Yeah. I'm so sorry I didn't get a chance to reply to everyone individually. <laughs> um, I mean, I had emails, text messages, phone calls as well. And yeah, if I didn't reply to you individually, I am sorry, but it doesn't mean it wasn't greatly appreciated. But it was one of them where there was that many, I was trawling through them, you were trawling through all your DMs and uh, and everything else, and it was hard to, to nail it down to one, and I'd sort of uh, figured out a few where we could potentially go to, but then eventually we sort of narrowed it down to this one club, um, mainly based on its name, <laughs> I think that was a, a selling point for you, wasn't it? Yeah, <laughs> it was a key selling point. But yeah, um, a big thanks to Ian, uh, the Earl of Harrington, who I've been um, in contact with. He's been really, really helpful here, and I'm just amazed at at the value that you get with this club. Yeah, I mean, I, I'll be honest, I, I'm not a member of any any clubs and I haven't been a member of, of, of clubs for well, probably since since I was a kid really and I didn't realize exactly the sort of venues we'd be coming to I mean the first one blew me away that was mm. a beautiful old I suppose like an estate it was lake, an estate was yeah, yeah yeah and I was not expecting that no um, or, to, or to knock out the biggest fish <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, that too. Yeah, but the lake was stunning. Not just the lake, but also the swims and like the attention to detail and the, and the care that you could clearly see had been put into that lake. It was, it was, you know, you could see that they were very proud of that venue and had done the best to, you know, look after all the swims. It was immaculate. Yeah, no, it it, it really was, and and it's a it's a credit to the the club. I think all of their venues are are, are really a credit to the club and. You know these these clubs, and I I, I have been a member of, of clubs in the various places that I've lived o over the years. I've always been a member of a club, um, 
and they really are like the backbone, I think, of, of, of fishing. You said you haven't fished it since, since you're a kid, but I think kids often can't get into fishing if it isn't for cheap club yeah. tickets and, and people putting on events and days for them. And, and, and these guys are not making a, a penny from it and and putting in an awful lot of time to to attract kids into the sport and, yeah, I think and, it's and like to, five five quid a year five quid so, five quid a year yeah for, for juniors uh, it, it's been, uh, and i say i haven't been a member of a club since i was a kid and the club i was a member of back then they did a similar thing where it was really cheap for the juniors around a junior match every year and they did a lot to encourage youngsters into the sport and then that 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 club sadly isn't I don't think it's even going anymore but you know if it wasn't for a club like that that was or, or like this that is doing mm. things for for youngsters you know I often think well would I be doing what I'm doing now if it wasn't for, for my club back then yeah you know and, and you don't you, you don't know the, ar no. the answer to that but I, th I think you know these these things these clubs they rely on just goodwill of of good people and that's probably why you know the club that you fished folded because the people who were running it had you know they might have passed on or whatever yeah. and there was no one coming up through to to take it over mm. who wanted to put that time that's and effort it. in so like if if you're involved in running a running a club anywhere in in the country just like m more power to you because um yeah, you're doing really, really great things for our sport, I believe. Yeah, yeah, so true. So you're not getting eaten. I'm getting really eaten right now. <laughs> really I'm, eaten. I, I'm trying, like, to like fight against it, but <laughs> I'm just give up now. Yeah, no, we are getting eaten. Going into the last night, um, spirits pretty high. I've really enjoyed this trip, although my angling hasn't been, I'd say, top notch. I'd say yours. Yours, you have done. I mean, you what you did with the task. Yeah, I, I know, but I think these venues kind of these venues and the type of fishing have suited me, haven't they? With the the float of fishing on 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 the first day, and then coming to a, a small water where it's very sort of intricate fishing and little gaps and things like that. It it has kind of played to my strengths. I think you, you're saying I can't float a fish. Well, you didn't make a good job of it. <laughs> <laughs> And on that note... <laughs> <laughs>sun has literally just broken and I'm in but it is in these lilies pretty solid now I know something that I've done before when fishing around lilies is they kind of lock themselves behind one and what you can do is if you let it go slack briefly it'll pop itself out and you can get get a pull on them so that's literally what i'm doing now just letting it go slack hopefully it'll just dislodge itself from that stem and then i can get a direct pull on it come on swim backwards yeah i need this to go in the net man for my own sanity. This is currently not good. Here we go, he's coming now.
he's coming he's coming so he's just releasing that pressure and right he's out of them pads oh that's great fantastic news <laughs> right. you can do what you want out there that's absolutely fine I did make a slight change on my rigs last night from the one that I hooked pulled on. Still using wafters, but um, yeah, changed the hook bait slightly, obviously, to a live system. Just had a ring sliding on the shank of the hook rather than it just fixed in place with silicon. Um, yeah, just to see whether that extra little bit of movement would gain me a better hook hold. And hopefully it has, or well, we've got a, a banana-like common looking here. Come on, into the net, please, please. Yes! <laughs> yeah, ah, oh, man, so please to a call that that is well and truly monkey off the back <sighs> yeah awesome first light bite absolutely exactly what summer fishing is all about battle in the lilies yeah quality Well, there we go. Really, really pleased to catch one at this lake. Like I said, that is monkey off the back. Just a little tweak to a, to a rig and, and another opportunity really, just, just get it, making sure that I put myself in the right position and gave myself another opportunity at catching a fish. And this time, it went in the net, no problems at all. Even though it was to and throwing in the lily pads again, this one went safely in. So yeah, I'm really, really pleased. Probably, probably about 16 pounds, really old fish. You know, the fish have been, or a lot of the fish in this lake have been in here for a long, long time. Um, I think it used to be a bit of a match lake and then, yeah, they've been thinned out and the better ones have been kept in. And yeah. Really pleased. Maybe it's time for another one. Who knows? I got another one. <laughs> yeah, it's not long since I've uh, slipped back that fish and got the rod back out and my other rod's gone. And I mean, it didn't take long to get it in. It didn't fight at all. Um, cameraman was off getting uh, getting some sexy b-roll and I got it in the net very very quickly and I'm pretty pleased about it because it's bigger than the last one yeah nice mirror so let's have a look at it I am buzzing well there we go a bit like buses two have come almost at once and yeah I am really really pleased definitely managed to get things working today and just over the last couple of days i have had an absolutely brilliant time and i'm sure you would agree yeah absolutely i've loved the fishing i've loved the venues and i mean at the moment we are living in expensive times aren't we and yeah i think the fish that we've caught the places we've visited just shows that you don't have to be spending a fortune to be fishing for really nice fish on really nice venues yeah absolutely been a blast